Hi guys, my name is Bor Rodante. So I've been asked to create a tutorial for the very beginners. And I thought it was a really good idea, but as I was thinking about it, I found it really, really hard to figure out what that means. What is a tutorial for the very beginner? Of course, we're not talking about the tutorial of learning the program because, you know, there's a lot of different programs and you can learn them anywhere. This is just requires a manual for the software. It's not about it. It's about how we paint and and more specifically, in my case, how we render. Because you may know or not know the anatomy, the geometry, how things work with vanishing points and whatever, but you can still paint something, even if it's twisted, crooked, it may still look good, just because of good colors and good brushwork. This is gonna be a tutorial with an actual homework, so all of you guys can take part in this. I think without the actual participation of everyone who wants to learn, there's no point in a tutorial for a beginner. It's not exactly for the beginner, but I think this is a good place to start with when you try drawing and coloring and figuring things out, but you don't have any kind of system in your head how to bring any kind of image from your brain onto the canvas so it would look good. So yeah, the point is, even if you're not a beginner, you'll see that this is a pretty important kind of exercise. So straight to the point. We have have this picture. This is something I rendered a long time ago for a different tutorial that I never did. Right now, what I want all of you guys to do is to actually paint this simple picture. There's just two white boxes and an orange sphere sitting on an infinite dark gray surface. And there's two light sources. One of them is obviously a light source somewhere in the back lighting up these objects and having these shadows going on, right? And the second light source is the reason why we can see this side of the sphere without it being completely black. So the second light source is the ambient light, like the skylight that doesn't have any direction, has very soft shadows. So this is a pretty generic, very common kind of lighting when there's one light source that has shadows plus the ambient light that doesn't have any direction and only has these soft shadows. So anywhere where the main light source isn't present, a Aside from these spots, everything else is lit with this really soft gradient from brighter top to darker bottom and with darker shadows on any kind of collision areas between any two surfaces. So when the ball is touching the ground right here, the ground becomes really, really dark very softly. I'm explaining this just so you guys would know what exactly you're visualizing here. This is the two light sources on the most simple objects possible. They don't have reflections, they don't have any complex surfaces, no texture, simple plain colors. Now the exercise is gonna be a bit unusual from what you expect it to be. Yes, obviously I want you to paint this render. Paint it in this kind of mode when you have a small thumbnail of the composition. I'll actually share this document as a PSD so all of you can download all the necessary materials from the description link. So I want you to work in this mode. I want you to start with a plain dark color. So basically what we're doing right now is we're guessing the colors of the image over there. Right now we obviously can see that it should be darker. So the main trick of this exercise is that you're not allowed to change the brush size at all. You start with this size of the brush and you finish the painting with this size of the brush. Even when you will be working on the smallest areas, smallest corners, when you will try to make the sharpest silhouette of a sphere or a box, you still have to do it with this size of the brush. Like, don't touch the size of the brush at all. This is the only thing you have. Now, don't be discouraged if it's really hard for you to match the colors properly. Just try as hard as you can to do that. So, Brightnesses, shapes, and colors are a very much of a subject to just try and make it as close to the original as possible, but don't worry if it's not perfect. It's not the point to make a carbon copy of that image, because what we're actually learning here is just how the lighting works generally, so you will be learning more and more as you will be doing this. And secondly, and most importantly, we're learning how to work with the brush. So this is what I did with that size of the brush while I was coming 
coming up with a tutorial. This wasn't the final stage, but uh, I'll start over right now to demonstrate what exactly you should be doing. As you can see, the shapes are far from perfect. The distance between the edge of the orange sphere and the edge of the canvas is much bigger in here than in the original and here as well. Like all the shapes and proportions are very wrong, but the point is, this looks like a lot more of the definition that you would expect to get from this size of the brush, doesn't it? And this is what you're here to learn, because working in this kind of mode and having this kind of image in front of you after like, I don't know, three minutes of work, you have this picture in front of you that is very easy to change because not a single actually like heavily detailed area is present here. Everything is very simple. So if you can spot the wrong proportions or anything, you can easily fix them very quickly with this same size of the brush again. So this is one of the reasons why we learn this kind of mode of painting with just one big, too big of a size of the brush. And the second reason is that imagine if this whole picture would be just a small detail in your big painting. This would be the way you would define that detail without being able to go even smaller because any painting has the limit of the definition because brush strokes can't go like one pixel thick. They can in digital, but that would be a big mistake to do that because it's not gonna look artistic, it's just not gonna work. So you really need to learn this kind of mode of painting. Basically, the main logic that you learn here is that you can't visualize anything perfectly. What you paint is not really these objects, but the strokes that visualize the objects, which is a very different thing. You have to learn really well that you won't be able to reach the 100% sharpness of your picture. So let's actually uh, do a quick demo, right? So I'm gonna choose like a middle gray. I'll start with dropping some of the spots of the lighting that is on the ground. Then I'm just adding a spot of this box right here. And of course the spot of the sphere as well. Now what I have is really, really vague spots of the basic composition. I just marked in where everything is, but none of these colors are even remotely close to the final result. But that is the point. The whole process of painting is really figuring out what you don't like about what you see and then adding the difference that you feel is necessary to bring it closer to your image that you want to see. So right now I see that the orange sphere is too bright, so I'm just gonna choose a darker color and add the spot like this. Now I see that the shape of the shadow is wrong, so I fix that a little bit. And as you go further and further in the definition of this composition, you will find the greatest challenge is how to show small sharp corners, small sharp details with such a big and soft brush. And to do that, you really have to train this trick of first painting the spots bigger than you need it, and then grab the nearest colors. You have to constantly use the color picker from the canvas that you're working with. So I grab the color and I erase part of it. So now I have a sharper image. This is actually a rectangular kind of like a upper plane of this box. You see it looks very wrong, like everything is bent and crooked in such a horrible way, but I'm not bothered because this is still very fresh. Like how long has it actually taken me to paint this? You can actually count the amount of strokes on the canvas. So it's not a tragedy for me to completely rebuild this. Like maybe I would have to start over completely, no big deal. I'm not losing anything. I'm not losing the concentration on what I actually need. I don't make myself a hostage of a lot of details that were done before I actually figured out what to do. So this is important. You have to be ahead of the details on the canvas. Like first you figure out everything to be in a proper place, in a proper color, in a proper proportions and everything. And then you will be adding details on top. So working in, a, in this mode with such a giant brush, you pretty much never leave the stage where it's so easy to fix any mistake. So this is what you do. Now I see that there should be a bit more space between the sphere and the box right here. So I'll just go ahead and move it a little bit. Now the area to the right from the sphere is a bit brighter, I think. So I'll grab a brighter
white or gray from over here and just add the spot semi-transparently. Maybe it shouldn't be as bright as this spot, so I'll just add it very slightly, like with a very low transparency. Yeah, by the way, I'm gonna be sharing this brush that I'm working with, with these settings, with the exception maybe of the texture, like you won't be getting this kind of grain, but you don't need to have it. You need the, the shape and the settings of the opacity. Of course, this brush should work the way it works right now for me. So when you press slightly, it becomes less opaque. And if you press stronger, it becomes 100% opaque. But nothing else changes. The size of the brush doesn't change at all. When I press slightly, I don't get a tinier line. Also a very important thing. You can only paint a less opaque spot, but not a smaller one, no matter what. So yeah, we go ahead and continue doing the same thing. I will try to define more and more details by first creating a spot and then removing portions of it, trying to fit it into the shape that I need. And this is like the main trick that you work on. Like I add the spot. You can see it's a tiny white spot right here from the smallest box, but the smallest spot I can add is this one. Then I'll grab the darker color and cut it away. Grab even darker one from over here because maybe it's even darker. Then I'll add like a side plane that should be even darker. Again, it's way too big. So I'll then cut it off with the colors of the sphere. Now I feel like I should add even darker shadow and I'll do it right here. In many cases, it's a good idea to use too strong of a color, much stronger that you need. For instance, instance, the shadow right here under the sphere, maybe not that dark as this color, but I'll just put less pressure into the brush. So I would have only portion of this darkness applied to the color. So as you can see, when you work like this, it brings this really convenient and cool artistic style to the picture. Right now, if I just leave it like this, it will look like a very expressive, cool painting with a very small detail. But you know, paintings like this, they exist. This is the approach that allows you to paint anything and then leave it at any point and it will be a well done painting. The important thing is to work on the whole picture together. and. With this size of the brush, it's very easy to do it. So yeah, you can repeat this practice. As you can see, uh, the previous version was much, much brighter because I didn't really care. This one's way closer to it since I already had the idea of the tutorial. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes you just add a very, you see, like soft spot instead of making a smaller spot. Sometimes that's also a good idea. So I can talk a lot about how exactly to jump into these little tricks of how to make smaller details with bigger brush but really all you have to do is just try. You have to try this method over and over again. You can repaint this a lot of the times and try to match the shapes of these objects and their colors and brightnesses as precisely as you can. And think on the overall brushwork of the whole picture, how exactly the brush strokes go all over the place. And you will see how this exact limitation of the brush size actually lets you achieve a much more artistic and easy result. There should be a bright spot right here. So yeah, you can download everything you will need for this tutorial from the description. So I'll be sharing the brush and I'll be sharing this PSD document with the initial render, a couple of my examples, then the dark blank canvas with the original color of the background for you to start working on. And on top of it, there will be a layer of the reference thumbnail and the reference for the size of the brush. Never go small than this size. As you can see, this is a very small resolution document because that doesn't matter much, obviously. And yeah, make your own versions of this picture and share them like this, like without a thumbnail, just this kind of result. On Twitter, on my Patreon page, on Instagram, just mention me in your message so I will get it. And then in the next episode, we'll go through your guys' results and see where we go from there. So good luck with your homework. And I thank you for watching. If you did, I guess you did. If you're here, leave a like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Watch the last few seconds of this video to see me finish finishing this, do whatever you want, and I will see you and your homework in the next one. Bye!
I guess this is it.